Hi, my name is Jim Sinesco with AFC International, Vice President, and I'm here to show you a very, very cool instrument. An instrument we've had for a long time, and I, I just haven't had a chance to, to do a video, and I don't know why, because this is one of the most unique gas detector instruments that we have, um, and it's called the PortaSense 2 from Analytical Technologies, or ATI. Now, ATI is an American manufacturer. Um, they're out in the Philadelphia area. I think Collegeville is where they're located, so they're out east. And they make one of the coolest instruments, and this PortaSense 2. Now, the PortaSense 2 is kind of like a, like a survey instrument. It's not a small instrument. Um, it's more like a survey instrument. It has this little probe here, but it is a single gas instrument. Now, single gas means uh, it can only do one at a time, right? But it does use smart sensor technology. So we can interchange different sensors on the fly and uh, do different, a variety of different gases. So it makes it very, very unique. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and show you that. I'm going to put the instrument down for a second. I'm going to pull up the little sensor keeper that comes with it. The sensor keeper um, is basically exactly what it means. Sensor keeper. It's going to keep all your spare sensors. It has room for one, two, three, four spare sensors. Now this sensor in here is the ammonia sensor. I'm going to pull that out and bring it in. And so you can see it says ammonia on it. Now, the ammonia sensor, on the label it says the serial number, it says the part number, 00-1011 ammonia sensor, and then it also has 500 slash 2000 ppm, full scale. So what's unique about ATI, not that it uses smart sensors, there's other instruments that have smart sensors, is that it has a dual range, linear dual range stamped and burned into its EEPROM and bored on the on the sensor itself. So it's a very high range, if you've noticed, 0 to 500, 0 to 2,000 part per million ammonia. There are not very many instruments, if any, that can do 0 to 500, let alone 0 to 2,000, and then linearize for those scales. So that's what makes the analytical technology PortaSense 2 so unique. Dual scales for all their sensors. They also have a low range ammonia sensor that can actually do lower range than this, um, but for high range capabilities and where you have high concentrations, you want the sensor that can actually handle the gas and not get saturated and also have the accuracy and precision that a linearized scale uh, smart sensor can only do. So very, very cool. Um, and the sensor choices, there's over 36 different gas sensors available for PortaSense 2. They can do ozone and in several different ranges phosphine in part per million and part per billion, hydrides part per billion, part per million levels, acid gases, HF, hydrochloric, um, HCl, uh, NO2, NO, um, many, many different sensors, ethylene oxide, formaldehyde, organics. So when it comes to sensor technology, there is probably nobody else out there, maybe exceptional with maybe Drager, that can hang with these guys. And even in that case, I think uh, ATI has got some different unique sensors um, that are available. So really the heart of the PortaSense 2 is the sensor technology incorporated by ATI in their, in their instrument here. So now these sensors also can go into their fixed point uh, instruments. They have a full line of fixed, explosion proof, non-explosion proof, um, where these sensors can be used as well, interchangeable. So this is not just a, a, a portable sensor, it is also used in their fixed line like their D12 and F12 series uh, uh, sensor transmitters. So it's very, very cool. So again, smart sensor technology allows us to calibrate this sensor in an instrument or in a sensor transmitter and then take it out and install it in another instrument um, and it, it automatically will pull up that calibration information right from the sensor. So when we calibrate a smart sensor, we're calibrating the sensor, not the instrument. So even the ability to send a sensor through the mail that's been calibrated, put it in your instrument, that's fantastic because not everybody has and in case like a, an HF who's got HF capabilities or is able to calibrate an HF sensor. Well, ATI does at their plant, but you would send it back, let them calibrate it. You could then put it in your instrument and you're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, put the sensor back in its sensor keeper. Now, what does a sensor keeper really do? Underneath uh, this, um, 
this little board here is a C cell alkaline battery. And that C cell basically applies power to all the sensors in the keeper, keeping the sensors warm so when you do make the, the change, you're ready to go and there's no delay. We do want to make sure we change out the, sun, the, the battery, make sure there's a fresh battery in there. The battery should last about, oh, a good three to six months um, with a full uh, load of sensors, five sensors. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, the instrument itself. Instrument itself is like a gun. It's got a display on the front. It's got four buttons. One of the buttons is green, and that's going to be your on-off button. You're just going to go ahead and push and hold that on-off button. It is a pumped unit. So the pump is going to be pulling a sample in. You'll hear the pump fire up, and then the screen will go through a couple of different uh, pieces of information. It'll say what sensor it's installed, the range, um, alarm set points, and uh, some other information of battery life and things like that. So it's going to go through a slight warm-up. While it's going through the warm-up, I'm going to show you a couple things uh, on the unit. On the side port over here, you're going to see a charging port. This is for the internal battery. There are two batteries on this unit. There's an internal backup Nikad battery and a port down here at the handle. You unscrew and there's a, a D cell in the handle. That's your primary. So you have an alkaline primary and a backup um, rechargeable Nikad battery internal into the instrument. When you look at the screen and the upper left hand corner as you're looking at it, you will see a little battery icon. And that battery icon will either be a P, a little symbol P for primary, or an S for secondary. If my primary battery, or in this case the alkaline battery, goes bad, it'll switch automatically over to the rechargeable NICAD, and you'll see secondary. At that point, you can open up the instrument, put a, a, another D-cell in, close it up, and it'll automatically switch back to the primary and be running and use your NICAD as a backup. So that's kind of a neat thing. Redundant battery systems and dual range sensors. Very cool. The instrument also has a data logger and they basically it's, it's, it's like a, a, a data logger facilitator. It's going to log the data and then the disk that comes with it will just, when you install it in your PC, it'll tell you, hey, where do you want to take that data and send it when you connect up the instrument? So it's not a program per se, it's a program that will facilitate saying, where do you want to send that data? Typically we would send that to an Excel spreadsheet, so it's going right into Excel and uh, so there's no need for any kind of uh, ATI software that has to be revamped every year or every five years when Windows makes a change. All you have to do is just point to the direction where you want that software to go and boom, it goes right there. So that's what that port is right there. On the front end, we got a, a, a port, an inlet port. It's detachable. It's got a little adapter here, a connector, and we can just disconnect. It's Teflon line because these gases and vapors that we're dealing with, these sensors, are very, very, we call sticky and very, very corrosive in some cases. So we want to make sure that the whole sample line is Teflon, non-reactive. Sample gets pulled into the instrument, goes into the sensor, it gets it responds with the electrolyte or the sensor and gives us a reading on the display. And then it goes back out an outlet port on the front. Now this little fitting that I have hooked in here is uh, an adapter that we can then add tubing to then put the return gas back into the same environment we pulled it from. If it's highly corrosive or highly dangerous gases and vapors, we don't want to be breathing that. So we, cut, we pull it in, we, we read it, we detect it, and then we can kick it back out to a vent or out to an area where it's safe into a fume hood or something else like that so we don't rebreathe that. The pump itself, can, we can attach tubing to it. We can run probably about 60 feet of tubing onto this uh, end of the probe or you can disconnect here. There's a fitting that comes along with it that you can add right here tubing and again I would use Teflon tubing to extend our reach and pull a sample from an area. The display reads in part per million. I don't know if you can read that. I'm going to bring it in close for you. Now, since I'm on the other side of the instrument, I'm going to look at that this is a chlorine sensor. So I'm looking at the chlorine. And we're seeing readings for chlorine. Now I'm going to reach up here and pull down a little device we made here at AFC. A little uh, bench that actually produces chlorine. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a few hits. 
and see if we're getting some response on our sensor. Now again, I can't really see on the opposite side, so I'm gonna go ahead and put down my chlorine generator here. And I'm gonna look at my sensor. Yep, sure enough, we're getting an alarm condition and the sensor is responding. 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and it's coming back down. I can go ahead and acknowledge that alarm as the readings start to come back down. So the port of sense does have a, a, a warning horn, warning light. It's not the strongest, not the, the most bold. It's more of a survey type monitor, but it will give you an indication you want an alarm and uh, will let you know a flashing little light. Um, to get to the sensor, all you need to do is unscrew these little nuts on the front. The whole front plate will come off and there's your sensor right here. You can hot swap while the unit is working. I can just go ahead and pull that sensor right out. Let's take a look at that. Chlorine, one to five, one to one, zero to one, zero to five. So it's a dual range low chlorine sensor. That's full scale, so 0 0.01 ppm to 1, and 0 to 5 on this one sensor. I'm going to go ahead and take the ammonia sensor out. Install it. I just popped it in there. I'm installing it, pushing it in. As soon as I pushed it in, the instrument says loading, actually knows that there's a new sensor in there and says, hey, I'm an ammonia sensor. Loads all the information, the constants, the calibration curves, everything into the, excuse me, into the instrument. And all I have to do now is put the cover plate back on. and we're back in business. I'm gonna go ahead and put that chlorine sensor back in. Put that sensor back in place, chlorine. It acknowledges it as a chlorine. I'm gonna tighten it up, close it back up. In about 30 to 60 seconds, I will be back in business. Once again, it's, it's loading the ranges, telling me what sensor's in there. Zero to one, zero to five, chlorine. Alarm set points. And I'm reading zeros. Check my pump. Yep, it's bogging the pump down. And now I can go around and do some sampling and look for my chlorine, maybe in a fitting or in an area, but it gives me the ability to make a fly on the fly, change out sensors. So again, PortaSense 2 from ATI or Analytic Technologies, some of the capabilities, high range sensors, dual range sensors, linearized, some of the highest sensors, highest concentrations and lowest concentration sensors in the market made in the United States. The sensor lab is right in Collegeville, United States. Very, very good quality. PortaSense a little bit good size unit, but it does have redundant batteries, alkaline and rechargeable. It does have a data logger, and you can then drop that information um, to a PC when you want to download and see what you've been con your concentrations are through a day. You can also run it off its, off its mains, off its charger, run it as a continuous monitor as long as it's not an explosion-proof environment that you're going to be using the monitor at. It is not intrinsically safe, so do not want to bring this into a refinery or a combustible environment. So that's the only one downside to it. But overall, it's a very, very cool instrument. 
price anywhere between uh, $1,200, 1300 to 1500 dollars depending on sensors, maybe a little more, a little less. So it's very affordable uh, and a very good unit. PortaSense 2 ATI from AFC International for AFC, Jim Sinesco. Thank you very much. If you have any questions and you need information more on the PortaSense 2, you can give us a call at 800 952 3293 or look us up on the internet www.afcintl.com again thank you very much thanks for watching and be safe